Og vi tar nå ringt til Texas i USA, og alene har vi tann mannen som er kjenter av mange føringer som propaganda buster. Hello, Tony. Hi, how? Well, better I should say, hi! <laughs> Tony, uh, tell us, who is uh, propaganda buster? What is your story, background? Well, let's see, it's a, it's a diverse background. I was uh, raised in Brooklyn, New York. I lived there my first 30 years, and then I uh, moved to uh, Texas 32 years ago. And, and I worked for AT&T for 30 years, which was the uh, largest communications company in the United States. And I uh, retired in uh, 2006. Other than that, yeah, I thought I would uh, start relaxing, but I discovered YouTube and Sea Shepherd, and <laughs> it was a marriage made in heaven. <laughs> Yeah, why did you start uh, this uh, YouTube uh, profile, uh, The Propaganda Buster? What happened was I, I used to uh, submit letters to the editor. Uh, and with that, it's here in the United States. Most newspapers print letters submitted by the readers on different topics of the day. And the Dallas Morning News used to print about maybe 10 letters a day. But they had a rule. You can only have one letter a month published and, and that was understandable you know to give other people opportunities so one time this is back in i think in 2006 there was an issue in the united states that really angered a lot of conservatives and i forgot what the issue was so i wrote a letter about it and it did not get published well that didn't bother me but nobody's letter got published on the topic now to me that that was a concern so i called the dallas morning news up and I spoke to the person who selects the letters. Well, she was a young lady who was a flaming liberal. She made absolutely no sense. So I says to myself, well, I'm going to have to get my opinion out but circumvent the Dallas Morning News. That's when I discovered YouTube, and that's when I gave my name the uh, propaganda buster, basically the buster propaganda of the American news media. What are the topics, uh, the subjects uh, you are dealing with on propaganda buster? Well, uh, mainly I, uh, I try to concentrate on uh, U.S. politics, and uh, also then I get involved. I discovered Sea Shepherd, so now that's a passion of mine, Sea Shepherd. And uh, because I have so many fans in Japan, I started directing a lot of my videos to Japanese issues and Asian issues. When you make your YouTube films, do you make all the work yourself, uh, and how often do you make YouTube videos? Yeah, well, I, I do the work myself, and sometimes I may make uh, three videos in one day and then not make a few more for a couple of days. But in between that, what I do is I do the editing myself, so that sometimes takes a little time uh, to research and to uh, get the graphics in there. And then I also, uh, the description. To me, that's the hardest part in these in making these videos because uh, in YouTube, uh, you have to, it pays off to have a lengthy description, but make sure it's uh, related directly to the video. So, and I have to do research on that also. So that takes time. Tony, when did the Sea Shepherd catch your attention, and when did you start dealing with Sea Shepherd? It was back in uh, 2008. I read an article in the Dallas Morning News about uh, people going to Taiji, Japan, to interfere with their dolphin hunting there. Well, I look at the article and I thought to myself, but wait a minute, the Japanese live on islands, and traditionally people who live on islands get their substance from the sea. Now, sure, the dolphins are uh, cute to look at, but it's a food source for people who live on the islands. And, and when I saw that these people who were protesting came from Europe and the United States, well, of course, in places where there's a large land mass, it's difficult for them to understand how these uh, beautiful, acute creatures of the sea could wind up on someone's dinner plate. Because here in the United States, we have these huge open spaces where we there are hundreds of thousands of cattle. So we don't have to go hunting out to the sea. We have the space to uh, grow our own food and do our own cattle raising. Whereas in Japan and other places that are islands, they don't have that luxury, so they go to the sea. And that just infuriated me. So I posted my first video about that in defense of them to be able to uh, go dolphin hunting without any interference from people from the West. See, and that was another thing also. Asia traditionally has been a victim of Western imperialism. 
All right, so now it's not as militaristic as it was in the past, but now it's, now these people are coming across culturally with their imperialism, and it still leaves a bit of taste in Asia. I posted that video, and I didn't realize it, how uh, it would take off in Japan. I, it, I, I was just looking towards a U.S. audience. I wasn't looking towards a Japanese audience. Well, I come to find out they reposted that video with Japanese translations on their version of YouTube called Nico Nico, and it took off like a prairie fire. And I started getting messages from the Japanese people uh, uh, saying something to the effect they never had anyone defend their whaling or dolphin issues in the West, and that I was the first one. And it, it just grew from there. Then about three months later, after that video, I discovered Sea Shepherd doing uh, primarily the same thing, and I investigated and researched into them and everything about them. There was absolutely nothing about them that I said, gee, that's nice. You know, <laughs> I mean, if those people in Sea Shepherd would have grew up in my neighborhood in Brooklyn, they would have never been able to come out of the house. What is it which makes the Sea Shepherd the bad guys who pretend to be the good guys? Basically, their exploitation and their lies. Uh, they, they exploit... The, uh, what I call these suckers around the world who are emotional wrecks who need a cause to grab onto to feel good about themselves. Now, what could be a better cause than to grab onto saving the lives of the cute dolphins and these intelligent whales? So they feel good about that. Also, I tend to think it's latent racism within a lot of these people because most of them are extreme liberals. Nothing wrong with being a liberal, but extreme liberals who do not like the Japanese for one reason or another. So they can't come out and say, well, I hate the Japanese because that's racist and extreme liberals will not tolerate it. So it stays latent. So they can manifest their hate for the Japanese people based upon their harvesting of dolphins and whales. And also, these people who serve on the Sea Shepherd ships, basically Watson himself, he, according to a a charitable donation site, he made something like $96,000 in 2009. That was his pay. In addition, all his expenses get paid for his traveling around the world. The second most highest person in that organization got $12,000. Now, that's a huge gap. He's even taken advantage of the people in his organization. <laughs> it's because of things like that. And, and and when you look at the way that people follow him and, and the lies that he tells, it's uh, equal to that of a cult. What do you think about the Sea Shepherd's campaign in the Faroe Islands? His campaign in the Faroe Islands is out of desperation because I think the last time he was there was in 1986. And they got more than their feelings hurt then. So they haven't been back to the Faroe Islands because they were able to get the dramatic video they needed for donations around the world. And then when Animal Planet came into the picture a couple of years ago, it was it became uh, more imperative to have that dramatic video for the uh, TV viewers. So he was able to get it from the Japanese. But the Japanese this time, what they did was they, uh, before there was any opportunity for dramatic video, they suspended their whale hunt by a month, thus depriving Sea Shepherd of that dramatic video. So where else are they going to go get it? Why? Back to those people in 1986. <laughs> Back to the Faroe Islands, because they know the people in the Faroe Islands are no nonsense and will not tolerate the stupidity from Sea Shepherd. As a matter of fact, Watson himself said uh, a couple of months ago, he knows it's against the law to interfere with the whale hunt in the Faroe Islands, he said, but I've got plenty of volunteers willing to go to jail because that would make for good video. But also he said he has the volunteers willing to go to jail. Not that he was willing to go to jail, but he has these uh, poor unfortunate souls who volunteer. They pay something like $1,000 a piece to volunteer to serve on those rust buckets. And what he does, he puts them in harm's way, either in dangerous conditions or pushing them to go to jail in the Faroe Islands. Tony, how has the feedback been from the Faroe Islands since you started busting the Sea Shepherd? Oh, it's been magnificent. <laughs> I feel like they're all family. <laughs> they they have been very warm and kind-hearted and uh, very supportive uh, of my videos, uh, which, uh, which I found uh, uh, amazing, and I'm very appreciative of that, that they uh, support the videos and understand that uh, 
they have support here in the United States as well as in Texas. You see, here in Texas, in the United States, we go hunting a lot. Uh, we hunt for wild animals, wild elk, deer, uh, even wild boar. It's a big activity in the United States. But out of the 50 states, the one state that leads the nation in hunting is Texas. The Texans here are, are really rugged individuals, which are people like the Faroe Islands. And the people here in Texas are no nonsense, just like the people of the Faroe Islands. The people in Texas are self-sufficient, just like the people in the Faroe Islands. So I see a lot of sim similarities. So whenever I mention to people here in Texas about dolphin hunting or whale hunting, either by the Japanese or the people in the Faroe Islands, and I ask them, do you have a problem with them doing that? The first question they ask me before they answer my question is, do they use it to eat? And I said, yes. And they said, no problem with that. And that's what you do. You use the whales for eating. The Japanese use the dolphins and the whales for eating. And level-headed people in the United States do not have any problem with that as long as it's being used for food. So that's why it was good to get that good feedback from the people in the Faroe Islands. It was good validation, and I appreciate that very much. Tell me, what is your advice to the people of the Faroe Islands? <laughs> I would love to say... Go down to the beaches and get in their face. Uh, but no, don't do that. Uh, because do not give them the uh, opportunity for that video they're looking for. By denying them confrontational or dramatic video, you are denying them money. And that's the way you hit these people is in their pocket, in their wallets, in their source of revenue. Not physically. The violence is not going to be the answer with these folks. Because that's exactly what they're looking for. A, a, a good suggestion I have, whenever they take out their video cameras, you take out your Pharaoh East flag and just put it in front of the video camera. Try to block whatever they're videoing, anything that may be happening in the Pharaoh Islands. And when they walk into your uh, business establishments, when they walk through your streets trying to incite, don't allow them to incite you. As a matter of fact, I would suggest you point at them and laugh. Because nothing aggravates these type of liberals than people being happy, especially conservatives being happy. So you just point and laugh at them. Tony, will we uh, ever see you in the Faroe Islands? Like I said, I retired in 2006, and I'm, I'm on a pension. Uh, and right now, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have that uh, type of resource to make that kind of a trip. But I, hopefully one day in the future, I'll be able to do that. Because uh, I would love to come to the Faroe Islands. I would have really loved to have gone to that hotel that canceled his conference and had a conference in that same conference room in that hotel where his was canceled. That, <laughs> that, that would have been a bow in his saddle. And when you come, uh, of course, we will treat you with pilot whale meat. Oh, I would love it. I, I had it in Japan. I had it both raw and cooked, and it was good. Tony, thank you very much uh, for supporting uh, our cause in the Faroe Islands. Uh, of course, we do not all in the Faroe Islands agree on uh, the pilot whale slaughter, but we all agree that uh, the lives of uh, Paul Watson should not be tolerated. And that is the main issue, Tony. Right, and, and I agree. You know, it, and If the people of the Faroe Islands decide not to go whaling, well, that's fine. That's the people of the Faroe Islands making that decision not some uh, lunatic foreigner who's out to exploit your culture helping you make that decision. It's basically none of his business. Thank you very much, Tony. It's always Thank a you. pleasure to watch your YouTube uh, videos, and I'm sure many in the Faroe Islands will watch them in the future. Th and thank you, and thank you for this opportunity to speak to the good people of the Faroe Islands.